Hey everyone, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, I'd like to go over my workflow for using Markdown with Vim. In case you haven't noticed, I did switch to Vim about two months ago, and it's been fantastic. So in this video, I just want to go over, you know, how I write Markdown files, how I preview them in real time using a browser, and it's even styled up to look identical to a GitHub CSS file, which makes it perfect for writing documentation for your open source projects. So let's get to it. Uh, first up, I am running WSL here, and I am still using Tmux for sure. And also, let me just jack up that font size because I know that's going to be way too small on video. So I do have Tmux loaded here, and I'm just going to open up my VimRC, and we can go over which plugins I'm using that are specific to Markdown. This isn't going to be a full-blown uh, Vim tutorial, but we're just going to cover the things related to Markdown. By the way, also, if I go to GitHub here, uh, if you go to my vimrc file in my .files repo, which I will leave a link in the description, this has the exact file that we're looking at here, over here in Vim. So the two main plugins that I have installed that are related to Markdown, Markdown are Plastic Boy Vim Markdown, and you can find this on GitHub, and then also Markdown Preview .neovim. However, I am actually not using NeoVim. I am running Vim 8.0, and this is the one that officially comes with Ubuntu 18.04, so you'll be good to go with that. And although it is worth mentioning, if you want to use this plugin, you do have to have uh, Node.js installed. So make sure you install Node and Yarn as well uh, to get this thing working. I was kind of reluctant to do that, but I mean, this Markdown preview is absolutely awesome. I mean, you could be writing on the left-hand side, have a browser open on the right, and it even keeps your cursor in sync. Like, it's remarkable. I actually have a 300,000 word Markdown file, which I use to write my courses in, and uh, it even previews that, which is insane. Like, that's a big-ass file. No delay at all. Uh, some other things that are pretty useful for Markdown, uh, and this is more of just writing in general, is June Guns, Limelight, and Goyo. I, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce this one, but Limelight's pretty useful. So let's say that you're writing, and I can actually turn it on right now, uh, and you'll see what happens. So take a look here at my cursor, right? It's on line 68. And by the way, I do have relative line numbers on. Sorry about that in advance because it makes it weird to reference line numbers. But, you know, if I move around this document, you know, you can see how it's, it's highlighting the paragraph that I'm on, but everything else is uh, dimmed out. Like this is, okay, so that's a bad example. Uh, yeah, here we go. It's a better example. So a paragraph is basically, I think, a number of lines that are not separated by an additional piece of white space. So like status line is its own paragraph, but that happens to be a comment, which is why it's not colored up. But uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, it may help you with some uh, writing, I guess, if you get distracted, if you have a lot of paragraphs on screen, because right now, you know, my font size is jacked up, but usually the font size, you know, you might have 15, 20 paragraphs on the screen. Uh, the other one was Goyo, if I can spell. Yeah, here we go, June Gun Goyo. Uh, that one, this one is actually pretty cool. So this works, you know, with any file. It doesn't need to be a markdown file, but when you run Goyo mode, it puts it into like a no distraction mode. Um, it basically centers the text in the middle, removes all sorts of status bars, and you can just write. So you can combine that with Limelight and uh, pretty handy. Although for me personally, if I'm writing technical documentation, that doesn't really help me that that much because I tend to always have, you know, a terminal open to the right or some code editor open to the right or some uh, reference material in a browser on the right. Like, I don't know. I just don't find it that useful. But uh, I do use it once in a while, like certain things when I write. Um, not so much. Well, I guess some of my blog posts, but okay. Anyways, those are the plugins that you may want to install. Uh, if you want the Markdown preview, definitely need that. And then uh, Plastic Boy Vim Markdown gives you code folding support, table of contents, uh, good syntax highlighting, solid plugin. So let's just assume that you have those plugins installed now. Let's actually write some Markdown and uh, see how this works. So I did prepare, uh, where did I put this? Tutorials Markdown. I did prepare a simple Markdown. Uh, let me just show you what's in here. Uh, I did create a blank readme file and a .docs folder. And that actually has uh, just a simple image here, vimcheatsheet.gif. And the Markdown file that we're going to write, it is going to contain an image just so we can see how that works. Uh, and then when we're totally done writing it, seeing it all set up, we are going to push it up to a private repo on GitHub just so we can see the image and everything work. So the first thing I would do is I would just open Vim in this directory because I want to open up all these files in Vim. 
Now, I do use Nerdtree, but I don't really keep it open all the time. Uh, I basically just use it for renaming and moving files. Uh, I do use, oh, sorry, I have to keep looking down because it's a weird key combo for me. Uh, I do use FCF for file navigation, like opening files and things like that. So here we just have a regular simple readme file, right? Um, simple readme file. And here we can see some syntax highlighting taking part. And if you look down here, we can see that the file type here that we're dealing with is markdown because we do have that plastic boy plugin installed. So here's a very simple readme file, um, hello world, okay? Now, let's take a look now at the preview so we can see this in a browser. All you have to do is type markdown preview, and that's going to open it up in a browser. Uh, the top here is a little bit cut off. I haven't really figured out why that happens, but the important thing is just underneath this readme header, uh, all of this is styled just like GitHub. So if you were to make a gist and paste it in, you would see the exact same thing. Uh, let me just make this a little bit easier to read. Uh, so what I like to do when I'm writing uh, documentation here is, you know, I'll actually drag this to the right, put this on the left, and now we can see here like, okay, hello world, you know, this is a pretty cool markdown setup, and then I'll just save the file, and we can see that it, it pops up here on the left. Now, I do want to bring up one thing, this is hard for me to see, all right, uh, it's in my vimrc file at the bottom of the file. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger because uh, I want to make sure I'm at least 80 characters wide because I have the font size so high. Uh, there we go. Well, still needs more. Okay, there we go. So at the very bottom of my vimrc file, I do have a couple of settings here related to Plastic Boy Vim Markdown and Markdown Preview. So let's first go over the Markdown Preview one because this is not going to work out of the box to look exactly like GitHub's uh, README files. And that's where this comes into play. And we'll work our way up, don't worry. So for the Markdown Preview, uh, I do like the Refresh Slow setting. I actually forgot what it was in their documentation, but I'm not sure if it does it on save instead of on character change, but basically it's just less CPU load. So as I mentioned before, I'm sometimes dealing with 300,000 words in a Markdown file. And uh, I don't need it to update every single time I type a character. So I usually, I like the refresh slow because I think it's, I think it's on save it changes or it's on some delay timer, which uh, works totally fine for me. I'm pretty sure it's on a delay timer, but then if you save the file, it does it, but not that important. The really important one is this one down here, the markdown CSS. This is where you can choose to put in a custom CSS file of your choosing, and that's going to dictate what this looks like. So if you're writing Markdown for like, I don't know, your, your custom website or whatever, and you just want to sample it, you can easily drop in your own CSS file. Now, where did I get this CSS file from? Um, that, I got it from this repo here. Let me just make that full screen. There we go. So if we go to uh, this guy's GitHub repo, and I will leave a link in the description, uh, he has this minimal setup to get, well, the minimal amount of CSS to replicate the GitHub Markdown style. And in the middle here, he has this GitHub Markdown CSS file. So what you could do is go to raw, and then you just copy this whole entire file uh, and then paste it into a new document on your computer. And then you go to your vimrc file and you put in the full path to where you downloaded and created that file. And then you might need to restart vim, I'm not sure, probably. Uh, but then you will get what we have here, which is the uh, CSS for GitHub. Great. So let me do that, put this back here. Uh, then over here, yeah, a couple settings for Markdown. Um, these are just things that I like to do. They're not really necessary. So by default, Vim Markdown, it's gonna conceal some of your syntax. So if you go to uh, like this file here, if I were to do like code sample here, uh, we can see that it's a code sample, right? Which is an inline code block. But when you have conceal on by default, it, it'll actually conceal these backticks, so you just see code sample. And I don't know, that's just like a weird style for me. I want to see all the markdown syntax, but if you're someone who doesn't really want to see the noise of maybe these backticks or like the brackets and, and I think uh, parentheses when it comes to links, then you may want to not set that. Uh, then we have sleuth automatic. I actually forgot what that's for. So I'm actually still pretty new to Vim and uh, I did set every single config value in here by hand, but this is something I did about a month ago, and I don't even remember what the sleuth does. Let me see if I can find it in here. Automatically set, da 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 da, da. okay. 
Uh, I guess that has to do with possibly indentation. There's maybe some behavior that I didn't like, like maybe maybe it was indentation with lists or something like that, and I didn't like how it pushed you over to the next indentation of the list like automatically. And then uh, file type markdown ZR. Yeah, so the Vim markdown plugin has this concept of using code folding, and what it will do is it'll fold things on certain uh, headers. So if I make another header here, let's see, another header. Um, what's, the, what's the short key? Or, well, what's the hot key for this one? I know ZR will make them all expand, but I actually forgot the one that actually brings them up. So what is this, Plastic Boy? <laughs> this is the smallest browser ever. Uh, fold. Let's see. How do you like that? <laughs> uh, maybe it was ZM. Let's see. ZM. Yeah, there we go. So that's just folding, you know, the things in between, like underneath this header. So if I had more content here, let's say if I were to just add uh, a paragraph, and then I would, uh, um, I just did the ZR there to to basically expand all the folds, and then ZM or ZM, ZM is going to fold them up. Um, I'm not a huge fan of folds, but, and actually that's why in my VimRC file, I have it by default, it does a ZR. And if we take a look here for the folding, Z capital R opens all the folds. So by default, if you were to open this file without that setting, you would get this where they're all folded up, but the auto ZR does that. So they're all expanded. Great. So those are all the settings related to Markdown. Now let's actually write a little bit more Markdown. So if I go to, uh, Oops, I can't even see that because the webcam's in the way. <laughs> I just want to add an image here, but first let me go back to the real-time preview here and just make this more centered so we can see. Uh, let's see, how do you do the previews with markdown images? Uh, this is the alt tag, this is the alt tag, and then we can just do the relative path to the image that we want. And, and that was in, I believe it was a docs folder, Vim Cheat Sheet. .gif, I'm pretty sure, was it that? Boom, there we go. And we could see it immediately popped up on the left here, uh, and everything is very nicely syntax highlighted. So that's basically the writing experience. I mean, you, you would just flesh out your whole entire file into your happy, and then when you're ready, you can just push it up to GitHub, and we can still continue to use these relative paths for the images. So let's check that out. If I go back to GitHub over here, and I'm just gonna make this full screen for now. Let's see, I'm going to make a new repo. And we'll just name this one Markdown Test. And I'll make that a private repo. Create the repo. Then uh, I need to do the dance of making this a Git repo because it's not at the moment. So I'm gonna open up a new window here. Uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'll just close out this. And then I'll do a Git init, Git add A, clear that so we can see it. And then, uh, well, normally I would just do a one-liner with like a git commit like that, but I do want to show you one thing here with Vim. You can actually have Vim set up to do your git commit messages, which is pretty cool because if you do this really long git commit, uh, as soon as you hit, I believe it's 52 characters. Let's see. Well, we can see here, I'm on 45, 46, 47, 48. So on character 49, we can see that it's no longer syntax highlighted, which is a, a visual guide to know that your commit message for the first line shouldn't exceed uh, 49, or I should say 48 characters. So I'm not gonna really keep this git, rep git repo, so I'm just going to go initial commit, save, quit, and then uh, what do I need to do? Go back to here and then copy paste all the fun stuff from here. So we need to make the remote here, copy that, paste it in, and then git push u origin master. And then that should upload everything to GitHub there we go, back to the browser. And then we should be able to go to here and uh, see our readme file, just like it was in our local browser with the Markdown preview. So that's how you can easily write Markdown with Vim. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.